Welcome to Comedy Live Presents with Roseanne Barr, Lee Mack, Michael McIntyre, David O'Doherty, Lee Francis, Paul Kay. Introducing the Comedy Live players. And now for your host, Mr. Russell Brand. Thank you, thanks. Thanks for your generous clapping. Welcome to Comedy Live Presents, where uh, live comedy is presented to you and uh, under literally no duress because once you've performed in front of Her Majesty the Queen of England, which I have done, perform in front of normal people, right? <laughs> I don't mean to be insulting to you, but you are not God's envoy, none of you. <laughs> when you die, BBC Radio won't go, oh fuck, change the record. <laughs> it just happened. People that know you will be mildly unhappy. The BBC will not register it. Candle in the wind won't be put on. <laughs> well, I met the Queen. Like, you have a lot of protocols and a lot of reverence and stuff. Like, people tell you how to behave. You think, it's just some old woman, ultimately, isn't it? So she can't do magic. She can't do nothing. She's just an old lady. She isn't better than me in my shiny clothes. <laughs> right? And, like, listen to the things they tell you, important things, and if you fuck it up, you get in proper trouble. Right, right, you're about to meet the Queen. Here are the protocols. Don't call her mom, as in arm. It's ma'am like jam. What? What? <laughs> it's on the telly. Everyone does go mom like arm, right? No, it's not mom like arm, ma'am like jam. If you're a boy, <laughs> don't curtsy if you're a boy. Oh, OK, bow. You bow just the head. OK, don't curtsy. Bow, mom like arm, jam, arm, jam. Right? And, like, my brain ain't always my absolute ally. Sometimes my brain is my adversary, like, <laughs> does things to make me unhappy and destroy my life. It, like, fucks me up. <laughs> Say you're uh, sitting with an elderly aunt that is much beloved to you, drinking, like, a piping hot cup of Bovril, right? And she's all, like, not a horrible aunt that you don't like. You like her. She's all right. And she's like, oh, is your mother all right, dear? Is everything OK at home? How's everything going? Like, I pretend that I'm listening, but all I'm really thinking is, is I could throw this right in her fucking face. <laughs> Me. I would just fry it right and then, and then almost do it. Do you know what I mean? Like the knowledge that you could do it, make a. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually happened, I've done that thing. <laughs> Don't do it! <laughs> that is how I felt when I met the Queen, right? A difficult thing. My mind was against me, right? At the end, you have to shake her hands, and James Blunt, he stood there na next to me, and that's hard enough to contend with. <laughs> I like James Blunt a lot, he bless him and everything, but he sound like a car horn a little bit, both talking as it... <laughs> right, <a> little... <laughs> I think that is why he was kicked out of the army, cos I think he gave orders in that voice and it confused people. Let's go to war. Let's go to war. I don't know what Corporal Blunt is saying, but it's very touching and it should be number one. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm stood next to her, dear, dear, dear old Blunty. You what, Blunty? I love you. Do you love me? Right, I see her. She's coming near and near. I spends ages talking to Blunt. Oh, do you remember soldiers? Oh, have you got your hat? Right, all things to talk about. Report. I'm standing thinking, ma'am, not arm. Ma'am, not arm. Ma'am, not jam. Ma'am, not arm. Don't curtsy. Nod your head. And part of my brain, my idiot brain's going, grab a fucking tip. <laughs> I'm right on a fucking tip. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, nearly did it, so I feel me arm go. <laughs> Put it all on like a rifle. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for our first fantastic act this evening. Heroic David O'Doherty once dragged a man from a burning building. Unfortunately, the man was a fireman and some orphans perished as a result. <laughs> Please welcome him. It's David O'Doherty. What's the time? It's David O'Doherty time. What's the time? It's David O'Doherty time. What's the time? You have to say it's David O'Doherty time. 
Tick tock, tick tock, it's O'Doherty o'clock. <laughs> uh, my name is David O'Doherty, ladies and gentlemen, but that uh, won't be the title of my autobiography. Uh, to try and sell a few more units, I'm going to call it Harry Potter and the Da Vinci Book of Sudoku. <laughs> this, uh, this should answer any other questions that, uh, that you might have, anyway. F-A-Q for the D-O-D, F-A-Q for the D-O-D, F-A-Q for the D-O-D. Frequently asked question for David O'Doherty, F-A-Q for the D-O-D. <laughs> Where are you from? I'm from Dublin City. What are your hobbies? Cycling and Frisbee. What have you got in store for us tonight? I'm going to rock your world in quite a gentle way. <laughs> Delicious cake as opposed to a bag of drugs. <laughs> do you have a sidekick? No, I'm the only one in it. Do you stand up at all? Yes, in a minute. How do you describe your style of comedy? I call it very low energy musical whimsy. <laughs> or blemwy. <laughs> Apart from blemwy, do you have any other skills? Yes. I can touch type 40 words a minute of a full driving license with two points on it of a decent knowledge of geography and a basic award in water safety. So my shows very rarely end in drownings. Where do you write your material in bed at home? What's the capital of Botswana? Gaborone. Geography. What do you think is the secret of a great comedian? You have to like sitting on trains and have quite low self-esteem. Oh, you're laughing. Please be my friends. Do you believe in God? No, none. Who's your favorite Beatle? George Harrison. And how do you know if you're with the right one or if you're not with this person until the right one comes along? That's quite a complicated question. <laughs> well, I have to admit, I'm not actually asked all that frequently. But I'm pretty sure it has something to do with not wanting to make out with other people. F-A-Q for the D-O-D. Frequently asked questions. All right, David. All right, Russ. Your song went quite well. Thank you. Cleared Thank you. up quite a lot of things I was worried about. Oh yeah. Didn't know how many points you had on your license. <laughs> Two. Yeah, I was doing. I was doing like 65 in uh, 70. What? Well, that's that's below the limit. So. Motherfuckers. <laughs> I feel a bit bad that you're on that independent island area, David. Why'd you say that, Russ? Well, because you're sort of like you're quarantined off there. And also, I can't help but be a little bit self-conscious that you are an Irish gentleman and we've put you on your own little <laughs> island. Are you all right about it? It's not a dig. It's all right. It's been going on for a while, so uh, <laughs> you get used to it. I think also, as a British man, I would like if just some of that island, we kept that for hours. <laughs> that top bit. That's ours. That top bit. Get it back. You can do it, but we're getting on great. It's all fine What's now. What's the point? So, yeah, yeah. Yeah, seems that there's peace between... Should we, me and you, to just to show that there can be peace between our two countries, reach out across... This they can be the Irish Sea, these people. <laughs> they lovely. You can be the Irish Ferry. <laughs> yeah, if we let him be the Irish Ferry, oh, I need a woman in the face. <laughs> This lady here, sometimes show people how you observe this show. <laughs> Look at that. She watches it through a tiny telescope from the future. <laughs> Did you call it a monocular? Yeah, monocular. Complete what? lie. She's doing it for the benefits. She's doing it for the benefits. There's nothing wrong with her. We're going to have a shut your mouth. You ain't blind. We will have a quick commercial break now. It's just to raise funds to pay our wages and to buy her a really long glass tube. <laughs> Thank you, 
thank you very much. Welcome back to Comedy Live Presents. Your next act tonight, Michael McIntyre, once attempted to convey the horror of 9-11 through modern dance. The victim's relatives described the piece as simply too soon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the excellent Michael McIntyre. <laughs> Thrilled to be with you here. Um, you, Happy New Year. Is that something we're still doing? 2008, it's up and running. Christmas is over. The new year has begun. And also what is over is that bizarre section between Christmas and New Year. What a strange six days in all of our lives. Nobody has a clue what is going on, who they are. Is there turkey left? Do I start my diet today? Have the sales started? Are the shops open? Is there post today? Is there post? Can I park here, for God's sake? When do the Rudvish men come? What's going on? What day is it? Do you know what day is it? Is the TV still good? What time is Spartacus? Why is every ad for sofas? Can we only buy sofas in these six days? Was 999, then 699, then 399? It was never 999. Deep down, you know that. Nobody's sitting at home on a 9-9 sofa going, I paid 9-9-9 for this sofa. <laughs> I could have got it for 3-9-9. Sale ends Sunday, starts Monday, it's a crazy time. <laughs> and then so much excitement about the new year. Happy New Year, hope it's happy. It's weird, this is a terrible year. Everything's gone to shit. <laughs> Utility bills are up. Petrol prices are at an all-time high. Train prices have gone up. House prices are plummeting. There's some kind of norovirus. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of people a week are projectile vomiting all over each other in houses surrounded by bills they can't pay. <laughs> Planes can't even land on fucking runways. <laughs> the evidence! <laughs> so, uh, the year's up and running. Uh, Tony, uh, Gordon Brown, I almost got it wrong, he's our Prime Minister. That's right, Gordon Brown. How's that going? He's a bit odd with his big head and his funny mouth, in fairness. <laughs> and the thing that amuses me is that he has only one eye, uh, Gordon Brown. So few people know this. Can I just ask this audience, uh, by way of applause, who knew that our Prime Minister, Gordon Brown, was blind in one eye? <laughs> Who's finding this out right now? more number of people and it's a strange moment for you all. You're all looking at each other, is this true? Is this lies? Because <laughs> they told you who was blind in one eye when he became Prime Minister and you either caught that information or you missed it. They don't keep reminding you. They don't, they don't have the news today, half blind Prime Minister Gordon Brown. You either know it or you don't. And it does make you reassess the last 10 years of government. It means for 10 years there would have been meetings between Tony Blair, Gordon Brown and David Blunkett. <laughs> Three good eyes in that room. <laughs> How can these people lead us? They don't even know if they've arrived yet for the meeting. <laughs> right, who's here? Everyone. Nobody's here. Whose dog is that? For God's sake, David, stand over there. <laughs> Apparently, Brown and Blunkett used to arrive early and start conspiring against Blair. I don't like him, he's a bastard. <laughs> I'm gonna take over this nation with my big head and my one eye. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tony would come in in the blind spot. <laughs> everything, you're both bastards. <laughs> We're having another baby, this is my big news, I'm having another baby this year. Thank you, yeah. Um, but it actually took 15 months uh, for my wife and I to conceive the child. Because there's a little window, you know, of opportunity, uh, ovulation, and if you fail, you have to wait another month. And this is how it goes. And at the end of every single month, she would say to me, go to Boots, get the test. <laughs> you know how badly I want this baby, and I feel pregnant, and I just need to know either way. Just go to Boots and get the test. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Why don't we just wait and see if it grows within you? <laughs> and I think that's the best and the cheapest of our options. <laughs> so don't argue with me. Go to Boots and get the test, OK? I want clear blue. Write it down. I don't want any of the other shit. I want clear blue. It's £13.99. I had to get it every single month. I could have got broadband. That's what really pissed me off. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure. There you go.
Good evening, class. I'm Dr. Dick Stroker, BSc, RIP, PhD, bollocks, from the University of Wisconsin. Celebrities perform unique functions, from road testing the latest forms of crack, flashing their vaginas, to having full-blown mental breakdown for our amusement. But why do they do it? Well, tonight, I'm gonna use my gizmo here to reveal what these weirdos do say and even think. Let's see our first clip. Okay, uh, cock and balls for you, cock and balls for you, and a big cock and balls for you. And, uh, Boobs are probably boobies, boobies, bigger boobies over there. The queen is the product of her upbringing. The substantial amount of inbreeding means she is difficult to get inside, as Prince Philip has discovered on many occasions. However, <laughs> using my gizmos and gadgets, I can get inside the mind of her royal haughtiness. Oh, more pissing flowers, how original. <laughs> Dump these on the Diana Memorial, will you? Thank you. It's doing wonders for my fucking hay fever. Colonial boy. I used to own your country, you know. What's your name? Sabu? Bow before me, you little bastard. Science is not to be confused with the utter bollocking nonsense of Scientology. Tom Cruise might be a higher being, an alien lizard, or maybe just a complete twat, but his powers cannot stop me from analyzing his every movement. So what are you wearing? Can you take them off and touch yourself? Me? I'm around six foot two. I'm wearing a baby doll nighty and nipple clamps. Okay, bye then, Dave. Oh, and Dave, I'm not in any way a gay. Let's see him in action once again doing his frankly tedious phone thing. Hello? Is that really you, Mr. Cruz? How are you? Oh, smack top, Tommy. Very well. So, do you find you a bit of ginger man? I beg your pardon? Ginger men, you know, with a plenty of that up in Scotland. Nope. You gotta talk to the studio. They've got, you know, they gotta set up a premiere or something. I'd like to go for a ride through Scotland. Shoot a picture there. I look at porno. You and me. I can do dinner. <laughs> Good. I'd like it. What would you make? Something hot to stick up your arm. Haggis. I'm afraid that's all I got time for today. But remember, if you see a celebrity, tell them dicks on their ass. <laughs> Thank you, you hysterical fools! <laughs> right, that was good, wasn't it? All good, clean. I enjoyed that. Uh, right, I'm going to do this thing now where I give you my unique sideways look at the news. It's hilarious. Uh, David O'Doherty, yeah. right, what I was wondering is, like, it'd be good for me to have sort of news intro music. So, yeah. like, intro to the news, because you've got that musical talent, haven't you? Yeah. Could you use your... <laughs> Saying, I'm saying what I'm saying, David. You could use your musical talent, and then I ca do my news. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty newsy. Just don't have enough gravitas. Well, okay. But uh, the news has got quite a lot of gravitas. Hmm. <laughs> I think still more gra like you know. Say it from that, it goes. There's been a murder, right? It sounds like it's too jaunty. So I was like, hey, it sounds like it's going straight into the last story, which is always, oh, in a Chinese zoo, a panda's done a fucking baby. <laughs> well done. Well done. Right, good. So, bit of gravitas, David. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Russell's News Roundup. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, welcome to my News Roundup. Oh, what about that thing? Them twins, what got married to each other? Right, I, feel, I do feel a bit sorry for them, but also... Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right, twins married to each other. I like that headline because it's already you can go. All oh, right, <laughs> twins married. Who took twins married? Right, because the first bit, twins married. Hey, what's wrong with that? To each other. Oh fuck! <laughs> oh, you day <dirty> devils! <laughs> of all the people I marry, your twin. <laughs> A newlywed couple have been forced. <laughs> have been forced to have their man annulled after finding out they are twins. The pair were never told that they had a twin or any other living relatives. I mean, wow, OK. Well, that's, what's, that's really mad, isn't it? Because it sort of makes me wonder, is that pheromonal, right? You know, like, because of pheromones, you might secretly think, hmm, she smells familiar. Like, if you're in a bar, <laughs> bloody hell. Something about the way that girl smells really turns me on. <laughs> Or is it narcissism, right, sort of like vanity and self-love, that you, like, sort of see a bird in a bar and think, my God, she's fucking beautiful. <laughs> she looks like me in a wig. <laughs> my fucking Wellwood. <laughs> what I think as well about those twins is, 
they must have known a little bit, right? Because surely there must have been a bit where they were talking to each other and one of them goes, oh, I'm adopted. Oh, really? I'm adopted. Yeah, I never knew my parents. Oh, really? I never knew my parents. I was born on the 4th of June, 1977. Oh, really? I was born on the 4th of June, 1977. We half look like each other, don't we? Do you know what I think this means? I think that this means we're perfect for each other. Let's go to bed. <laughs> this is the most tragic bit of the whole story, though. This line here. <laughs> right? Uh, the couple, once being given the news, whilst agreeing that it was tragic, have also agreed never to live together again or to have sex with each other again. <laughs> Not easy. Because <laughs> that must have been really horrible having to tell them. Um, okay, uh, sit down. Um, right, I've got some wonderful news for you. You've got a twin sister. <laughs> oh, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, well, don't celebrate right away because you've been fucking her. <laughs> oh, my God. Why did you make me this way? <laughs> like, there was a quick bit of closing news music. Russell's News Roundup. That was the news! Welcome to the television. The Comedy Live Players. London, January 2008. And as their mothers reconquer the world of pop, backstage at the O2 Arena, the next generation of spices meet for the first time. Star. You still breastfeeding? No, no, not since the silicon poisoning. Yeah, my mum's not me of breastfeed. She says if I'm not eating, then neither are you. <laughs> Here. What you doing, bitch? Shit, sorry. I thought you were one of those cuddly toys. It's the goddamn leopard print. Still, I'm knocking your threads, Bluebell. <laughs> yeah? Auntie Mel C bought them for me. She says girls in dungarees look really cute. She bought me a Katie Lang album as well. I don't know why. <laughs> you still wearing that baby bib, Cruz? Yeah, yes, for the sick, you know. Sometimes mum don't make it to the toilet, so she just... Oh, by the way, have you recovered from that traumatic birth? Yeah, yeah, it was a bit painful, you know, sort of minding my own business, sort of wandering around, and next thing you know, I smashed my face into a clitoris. Was... Yeah, I'm lucky, old caesarean. Mm. Must be horrible, first thing you see when you're born is a big twat. I wouldn't know. My daddy wasn't even at the birth. He would not been my dad. All I know for sure is that my mom's scary. You think your mum's scary? You should hear my mum sing a lullaby. It's fucking weird. <laughs> Thank you. Now let's look at a season of short films made by some greedy pigs. It's the adverts. <laughs> Presents. I've been celibate for a while now. I stopped now because it's boring. Uh, <laughs> celibacy is all right, but it ain't as good as fucking, though. Definitely fucking much more better, right? And the thing is, celibacy, uh, if you try it, it does make you do much more wanking, right? <laughs> so I didn't do hardly any wanking during celibacy. Wanking Rose. I'm quite an intrepid wanker. And, like, with the internet, you can really explore... Masturbation. Uh, I think never pay for pornography in it. That's number one on the wanker's charter. If, you're, if, you've, if you've never handed over your credit card, well, this isn't that bad. <laughs> I'm just surfing the web. <laughs> surfing away, all nice. But it's so intricate, it makes me feel, how does paper pornography still exist? Well, who's reading porno mags now? The like analogue pornography. It's an <laughs> ancient idea. You might as well wank over the Queen's coronation. <laughs> there she is, Her Majesty. Oh, blimey. Look at the dignity. <laughs> I find very difficult even with uh, internet pornography and this is actually an analogy with my own sexual existence is that I find it very hard to commit even like in a wank I find it hard to commit to relationships but even in a wank I find it sort of hard to commit I think all oh, right she's quite a good woman all right I'll wank over oh I don't want to come over her though there might be a better one okay <laughs> no you don't deserve it you're not getting it girl <laughs> that's sort of like pontoon like twist or stick <laughs> twist twist <laughs> Girl, better a girl. <laughs> uh, 
like the thing I find, right, sometimes you really think, oh, well, this is it, this is the one, she's on her, oh, I can give it over to her, you can take my salty burden, darling. <laughs> and think that she's the one and everything, and then, like, sort of something will pop up and go, you could already have 10,000. Oh! <laughs> I've spunked up over financial opportunity. <laughs> Thank you. What's really difficult, you saucy cow? What? I, I wouldn't twist for you. I'd stick. You're a stick, dear. All oh, like, I'll gum you right up. No, I'm sorry. I'll oh, be mum's here. Sorry. She is. She's there. People think, oh, he wouldn't say that in front of his mum. Well, there she is. That is actually my mum. He's very good for my Russell. My mum thinks I'd swim out simply because I've not yet drowned. <laughs> Hard is I can't deal with the transition, right, between pre-ejaculatory psychology and post. Right, before I come, I'm a different being altogether. Fucking hell, I want to come. Oh, yeah. I'm the lizard man. I want to fuck you. I want to fuck you. Oh, yeah, all my different moves. The Matrix. After I come, though, I... Oh, my God, what have I done? <laughs> all guilty. Because of that disparity between pre-ejaculatory and post-ejaculatory state, that I cannot understand the phenomenon of seagulling. Are you familiar with seagulling? <laughs> Allow me to educate you. <laughs> seagulling is a craze at our British schools where boys, evidently post-pubescent boys, masturbate into their own cupped hand, <laughs> gather up their sperm, then go up to a teacher or a school friend and go, seagulling! <laughs> in my day, we were satisfied with pugs. <laughs> That's really horrible, ain't it? I was like, how do they do that? Like, 13, 14-year-old boys? Because like, me, after I come, I'm in such profound emotional despair and existential angst. Like, oh, God. Oh, cracky, was it all worth it? I've really let my mother down. <laughs> I'm a horrible boy. And like, I, to think that after that tumultuous roller coaster of emotion, how would you then go, oh, fucking hell, yeah, I'm going to come. Oh, I'm going to come. Oh, um, yeah. oh my God, I'm going to die. See, Gullin! <laughs> I'd be wandering around. I wouldn't be able to do it with any commitment. Uh, well, um, I did think that some seagulling would be a good idea. Uh, David O'Doherty, seagull! <laughs> what have I done? Thank you. All right, thank you. Sounds so sort of pestic now. Time for an original game show now on our show, which makes a change from all these repeats. Even the news is all repeats, right? I've seen that one about the car bombs about 100 times. <laughs> you think they know where the car bomb was hidden by now? Please welcome the host of this game show, Mike Strutter! <laughs> Strutter, and right now, I'm going to turn this lame fucking show into a hip fucking game show. Anyone got a problem with that? <laughs> Good. OK. Well, fuck you. We're going to find out just how much a loving couple really knows about each other as we play Mr. Fucking Missive. <laughs> what the fuck are the guests? What the fuck's the guests? Oh, there you are. What are your names? And where are you from? Hi, Mike. We're Tony and Barbara Hurst from Southampton. Give them a big hand. <laughs> OK, Tony, tell me, what do you do for a living? Well, I work in accountancy. I don't Mike. give a fuck, motherfucker. <laughs> what I do give a fuck about is how well you think you know your fucking. Here's how the game works. Catherine is going to take the lovely barber there into our soundproof booth, and I'm going to be firing a few questions about your relationship. If you match your answers with your honey, you're in the fucking money! But if you don't click with your chick, you're a useless fucking prick! <laughs> Fuck. Okay, I'm just going to have a wacky jack here. <clears throat> a little bit of fucking gack here. You want some fucking I coat, don't you? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, sorry. Oh, please. Oh. Hey, that's fucking rude of me. Anyone want some coke? You want some coke? Yeah? Okay. Fucking get the fucking coke over there. 
Okay, fucking yeah! Huh? Don't worry, it's not real cocaine, it's bad speed and fucking ketamine. Okay. Here we go. Question one. If Barbara Eva was out of bounds for a few weeks with something real nasty and itchy, what would she suggest that you do for sexual pleasure? Would she suggest, A, you bag yourself a filthy fucking whore? <laughs> B, get out your porn stash and have a shaft shuffle while she makes you a fucking meatball sandwich? Or C, bypass the manky muff and let you hoof your hose right up a fucking dinner dumper? <laughs> say, Mike, it's none of those, but I'll, I'll go B. I'll just relax with some magazines until she felt better. OK. Question two. You're out for the night, and Barbara is left on her own for a few minutes when an oiled-up beefcake who's hung like a fucking bison starts hitting on her. Big time. Would Barbara, A, tell him she's happily married and then walk away? She'd walk away. That's right, yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why don't we see exactly what would happen in that very same scenario. Catherine, bring out the fucking meat! Hey! Look at this. Fuck! Oh, my God! One glass of fucking vino. That's my That's all wife! Some men pay good money to see their fucking wives fuck like that. Here are your options, Tony. Option one is, you let this guy come, then we get Barbara out here, and we see if your answers match up. <laughs> Option two here, I'm offering you a free blowjob from a top London hooker who also doubles up as a game show assistant. Get your fucking ass over here. OK, Tony, you got 15 seconds to decide to whether you are going to try your luck or get a free fucking suck starting now. What's he do? Suck. 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 Yeah? OK, time's up, Tony. What are you going to do, big guy? I've had a great day, Mike. Um... <laughs> I'm going to take the free oral sex. He's taking the free oral sex! Woo! So it's nice that you use such place as fucking sweet to fish. You might as well use the sound plus plus with the fucking lady there. Time's up. Excuse me? Time's up, we've got to move on. We've got to play back to Russell. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? It means I'm all over the bloody floor. He's all over the bloody floor. You got that right, cocksucker? <laughs> fucking motherfucker! <laughs> fucking... <laughs> It's live television for you, and you fucking love it, you sorry bastards. Look what you made me do. You fucking did this. So good night. God bless. And if I offended you tonight, my sisters and brothers, they kiss my ass and go, fuck your mothers. I'm going to fucking smoke you up. An iconoclastic view. Mother Teresa was condemned for espousing the Catholic doctrine. You remember Mother Teresa. She was condemned for espousing the Catholic doctrine that forbids the use of contraception during sex in spite of the AIDS epidemic across the continent. She insisted that African men not use condoms during sex. Well, I think it's very nice that she let them fuck her at all. <laughs> yeah? Iconoclasm, you will get actual iconoclasm. Time now for a brilliant comedian and the man who was very first in the line that happy day is the wonderful Lee Mack. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And thank you to the wonderful bearded lady. It's... <laughs> I'd like to start tonight by making a confession. I'm actually drinking and driving tonight. <laughs> yeah, see, everyone says it's, it's dangerous. I can tell you two things that are far more dangerous than drinking and driving, right? One, drinking. Two, driving. <laughs> Do you know how many people were killed last year in Britain as a direct result of alcohol abuse? 35,000. Do you know how many people were killed as a direct result of driving a car? 22,000. Do you know how many people were killed as a direct result of drinking and driving? 500. <laughs> I'm not taking any fucking chances. <laughs> Do you know how many people were killed last year in Britain as a direct result of drinking and driving and juggling? <laughs> Two. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not saying it's completely safe. <laughs> That's a strange laugh. After you laughed, off, thought, that actually makes logical sense. <laughs> Don't blame me when you're going home tonight and a copper stops you and goes, what, are you drinking and driving? No, sorry, I went to see Lee Max tonight. Have you... <laughs> 
You always get asked the same questions in this job as well. People always say the same things, you know. Do you do refunds? And uh, they say, uh, they ask me who my heroes are, who my inspirations are. Do you know who my inspirations are? Do you know who my inspiration, my hero is? I'll tell you. My dad. Aww. I know you're thinking, come on, Lee. You don't know who your dad is. <laughs> <laughs> my dad's the funniest man in the world. He's the kind of bloke that could read out a telephone directory and it'd be funny. I mean, to be fair, I used to do it with his cock out. And, uh, <laughs> it wasn't quite as funny when he started phoning people. <laughs> my nan was a very weird woman. Uh, I remember the last thing my nan said to me, actually, just before she died. She said, uh, what are you doing in here with that hammer? <laughs> she, said, um, she was great, my nan. She had this amazing way with words. She used to say things like, it's five pounds, don't tell your mother. I'd say, why not? And she'd say, it's hers. <laughs> but the best bit of advice she ever gave me, my nan, I, I went to see her as a little boy and... I said, don't dress as a little boy, Nance. Not you. No, I didn't. I went to see her as a little boy. <laughs> but I love the crankies. I don't care. I went to see her as a little boy and... I asked a question I know we all want answering. I said, Nan, what is love? <laughs> what is it, Nan? What is love? <laughs> well, my Nan told me something I'll never forget. She said, you know, I've always thought of it as something very natural and very organic. Oh, yes. On the outside, it's tough. And it's ugly. And it's unattractive. And if you let it grow naturally and look inside, you'll see it's soft and it's gentle. And I said, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. Do you really believe that's what love is? And she said, love. I'm sorry, I thought you said a melon. <laughs> well... You've been a lovely audience. I'm now going to go and drink myself senseless backstage. Uh, I'm not an alcoholic. I just do it till the screaming in my head stops. <laughs> so, uh, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the show. My name's Lee Mack. Come on. performance and sketch coming up now. I wonder if you'd be kind to skillfully throw to it, perhaps without mentioning coprophilia. I don't know, it's up to you. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really my style to, you know, I, I, uh, I, think, I think different sorts of comedians. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, some comedians, mm. not for the faint-hearted. I think my comedy is fine regardless of your cardiac condition. Yes. <laughs> if you've got a vulnerable heart, still can very much enjoy David. Yeah, I like that idea. You could do stuff in children's wards, but which is an, air, an environment in which I do not flourish. <laughs> I've been banned from Great Ormond Street. Now, introduce this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, take the batteries out of your remote control. Put them into a calculator, an old-fashioned one that takes AA or AAA batteries, and then type in 58,008, and then turn it upside down. That says boobs. Yeah. <laughs> and that will prepare you for Craig David. <laughs> I am very buff. I am very tough. I am very strong. Someone sing my song. But don't laugh at me. Stop laughing at me. I'm not a laughing matter. I'm not a stand-up comedian. I'm a Kez. She said no. And today, I've come here to present a film which hopefully will be on Panorama. It's about my demise. Please enjoy. Oi, oi, vote selector, man! <laughs> hey, Craig David! It's from a bar, isn't it, eh? Well, you piss your pants, eh? Where's Kez? Let's get a picture of you. Oh, oh, there you go. Go. oh you mug! Get lost! You mug! Get lost! I was one CT getting sensation. Top of the charts, right on top. Topping the charts, on top. <laughs> but that all changed. I became mediocre. Today, I'm under the bloody ochre. After a recent spat of retaliation in the press, hitting back at the core reason of my rise, but mostly my fall, ginger bastard. I hate him. I do. He ruined it for me! I've decided to put the negative vibes behind me 
And um, there you go, Kez. And get my career back on track with a more um, positive flavour. I even tried to rope somebody in to do a duet with me. You know, strength in numbers. Two is a duet. That's, that's numbers. <laughs> My name is Craig David. I'm in the alley right now and I'm asking people if they'd like to do a duet with me. There's no obligation and you never know. We could win a number one hit together. Fuck off, mate. I don't know you're the real Craig David. You could be that stupid nutty ginger c in a rubber mask. <laughs> Just about enough of this. OK, fucker. If I'm not the real Craig David, then why, please tell me, does it say Craig David in this fucking honor? How do I know that you're the real fucking Anthony Costa? Hey, you could be just a fat fucking Mexican. I decided to go for an interview for a proper job. Something to fall back onto, you know, if it all goes tits up. So, Craig, what do you think you can offer Greg's Bakery? Oh. Let me see, well... I can do it outside of the kitchen as well. I can sing my name and I can lift this one up and I can lift that one up. But I can't do it both at the same time. Otherwise, I have to pay the record company that I was with £52 because it was their idea, you know, to lift them both up and ask for a rewind, you know, do the little spoodle and the beadle and the point monks. Right. <laughs> well, I worked at Greg's for um, two days and then I got sat. The head honcho himself, Gregory, he telephoned and he says that I didn't have the right attributes to work there. So I'm going back to my music, but this time I'm going to be producing, you know, like Timberpants, who produces them um, pussy juice girls. <laughs> like that. I'm going to be doing that. And I'm working with none other than Ken West. I'm going to make it milky for you, Ken. You like it milky, don't you? Thanks, Craig. <coughs> Bits and douchey. <laughs> Listen to this, Craig. You like this one. It'll probably be your favourite. <coughs> What did I tell you? She is a gold digger. <coughs> Bits and deuce it. It's proper wicked, isn't it? <coughs> proper wicked. I don't say bow no more. It's just so passe. <laughs> Bar was so busy with success that Boffins cloned another version of her to fulfil her commitments. Unfortunately, it turned evil and was dubbed Roseanne Bastard. Let's hope that this is actual, wonderful Roseanne Barr. Give her a generous welcome. <laughs> Very young. Hi. I can't begin to tell you what a privilege it is for you to have me here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I really, really mean that from the bottom of my heart. Does my fat ass make my ass look fat? <laughs> Do you guys have uh, vaginal rejuvenation here? <laughs> I just had that, a vaginal rejuvenation. You don't have it? Now I have a vajunior. <laughs> Everybody's gay now. Have you noticed that? Everything, every news story is about the gays, like the Episcopalians just ordained the first ever out gay bishop, which really outraged the more traditional closeted gay bishops. <laughs> Catholic crowd, are you? Well, <laughs> the Catholic Church is certainly having sexual problems of its own, in case you've missed all those stories. You can't really blame the priests, though, because a lot of them started out as altar boys and they just got sucked into it. <laughs> I'm getting older now, ladies and gentlemen, and, uh, you know, I'm busy, though, because my doctor tells me it's very, very important to try to wake up every day. <laughs> and I do walk about an hour a day, too, trying to remember where I park my fucking car. <laughs> but my body is changing. It's sad. Now I'm wet where I'm supposed to be dry and dry where I'm supposed to be wet. <laughs> Tell me about it. It's no good. But one good thing about getting older, I'm a multitasker now. I pee when I sneeze. <laughs> but now I'm old and I'm trying to get up the energy, you know, to entertain my 12-year-old son. We play games like cowboys and invalids and <laughs> hide and go sleep. It's one of our favorites. I'm 
really bitter. I'm like a really old, bitter woman. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm bitter. I'm bitter towards men. But I think you should give them credit when they do things better, and there are some things that men do better than women, like reading maps. They, they are way better at reading maps because only the male mind could conceive of one inch equaling 100 miles. <laughs> that kind of thing, um, you know, all, the men have the sexual problems too, not just the women. The men are all on Viagra. That's a horrible, horrible fucking evil drug if you ask me. <laughs> it's mainly the old men that are taking the Viagra. And let's be real honest, nobody really wants to fuck an old man. <laughs> Especially for four hours. <laughs> Unless you're Catherine Zeta-Jones. <laughs> so thank you very much. Good night. <laughs> Fantastic. What a wonderful set, what a wonderful show it's been. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah. It's been good, hasn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Although you have proven yourself to be hysterical over the course of the <laughs> evening. Uh, da David? Oi, David, have you enjoyed the, have you enjoyed the show? It's what's been all the. Right. What? <laughs> Why, what's the matter? You seem, uh, you seem unsettled and unhappy. Why? Just being stuck over here, us. So, you know? Oh, oh, bloody hell. Oh, David. It's lonely. I'll come over there with you. We need a better uh, Irish Sea Ferry. <laughs> Look at you, you beefcake. You come over here. <laughs> What's your name, dear? Tom. Tom, you look like a reliable s source of travel. Look at you. <laughs> oh, I'm not a Sinbad. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there. You see? I'm here with you. <laughs> there you are. We're all together now. It's a bit more relaxing, isn't it? You OK? It's better now, yeah, yeah. It's all right over here on your island. I don't know why you're complaining. <laughs> your job's quite easy. Sat here, musical interludes, whimsical songs. Oh, I'm David O'Doherty. <laughs> oh, what about a wasp? Is it really so different from you and me? You assume they're evil because they're a wasp, but if you get stung by a bee, you don't mind it because, you know, the bee will die. The sort of thing you do is a... That is literally your job. Oh, wow. I did a, a poo on a lady's car and then I cried. <laughs> <laughs> See, our, our comedy isn't that different. No, we ain't so different after all, are we, uh, you and I? God bless you. David O'Doherty. <laughs> I've got Stratus Coke on my hand. What a wonderful show it's been. Not only a run of the great night of live comedy, we have also united all of these islands. OK, it's just time now to thank Lee Mack, wasn't he fantastic? Lee Francis, Michael McIntyre. Michael McIntyre was wonderful. So, Kevin, what do you make of that? Well, what can you say? I loved it. Loved it. Uh, you happy with the new signing? Delighted with Russell Brand. I mean, I've read a lot about his technique in the papers, but I have to say, when said we were changing ends at half-time, his little face lit up. He loved it. Loved it. Loved it. Loved it. And for my money, he was the hardest working man on the pitch. I mean, whenever possible, he tried to get himself in the box of the junior researcher. I'm joking. I'm not. Tough first half? Yeah, it was a bit of a disappointment, but, you know, I've given the lads a roasting at half-time, I've videoed it on my phone, I'll be selling that to the news of the world. So, Lee Mack, did he live up to expectations or did you consider pulling him off at half-time? Uh, no, no, he had an orange, the same as everybody else. So, are you happy, Kevin? I've not been happy for 12 years. Fantastic. Back to the studio with Alan Shearer and his shiny nuts. <laughs> <laughs>